Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wariawan and today we're going to talk about Gear Acquisition Syndrome. Let's go! Before we continue with today's video, this is just a quick reminder for you to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and let's continue with the video. So today I want to talk a little bit about Gear Acquisition Syndrome or GAS in short in my perspective for both uh, music and photography and filmmaking as well. So before we do just that, I just want to remind you that the main point of this video is not to stop you from actually buying new gear or to upgrade your older gear. Because let's face it, sometimes buying a new gear is necessary whether it's because your old gear is already broken or if it's because it's no longer producing result that is up to your standard. And also let's be honest, sometimes buying a new gear can spark creativity as well as joy especially when you're using them to create something. But in this video, I wanna raise a little awareness so that you'll become more considerate when it comes to your gear purchase decision. In other words, be more mindful and try to hold back from buying unnecessary gear that might not benefit you. Okay, so let's continue with the video. Alright, so now let's talk about gear acquisition syndrome. It's basically a behavior or a habit where somebody is buying more gear than what is necessary. This is actually quite a common behavior for people who are actively involved in creative space such as a filmmaker, photographer, or musician. A lot of people, including myself, might have actually experienced this syndrome to a certain degree. If you are a guitarist, you probably have already bought too many guitars or too many guitar pedals that you don't really need. If you are a photographer or a filmmaker, you probably already bought too many cameras or lenses that you probably don't need. You already understand what I mean, right? I mean, I'm guilty of this thing too. And can you see back there, my guitars? Most of them are because of gas, while only some of them are truly functional. <laughs> <laughs> now you might say, no, I'm just fine. I have the money. Why gas is a problem? Well, not only gas is bad because you're spending money on things that you probably don't need, but you're also letting yourself become easily tempted and somewhat addicted to purchasing new stuff. It's true that maybe right now you have surplus cash, but in the future, nobody knows. And also, with every new gear purchase, there's always a hidden cost of ownership. Simply owning a new camera or a new guitar or a new pedal might cost you money in the future. That cost might add up, and in the future, nobody can guarantee what will happen. Are we still gonna have surplus money in the future? And that's the problem with gear acquisition syndrome. Ah. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about what actually causes gear acquisition syndrome. Well, in my personal opinion, there are a few things that can cause gear acquisition syndrome. First cause is fear. Oh. No, 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 no. Not that kind of fear. Actually, what I was talking about is fear of not upgrading. Fear of not upgrading from micro four thirds to full frame. Fear of not upgrading from digital to full analog guitar rig. Fear of not owning the latest iPhone with its newest camera setup. That kind of fear. This kind of fear is called FOMO or fear of missing out. FOMO. Fear of missing out can easily happen in people who are involved in a community or a network. And these people will try to keep up with what's latest and greatest to avoid missing out on what's trending and being left out by the community. If you are a part of a community who acts like that, who kick out their member just because they're not keeping up with what's latest and greatest, then you're in the wrong community. You better get out from there. A good and supportive community is the one that is not encouraging you to keep upgrading your gear, but to encourage you to create more art, to become more creative, to pursue your passion rather than just buying new gear. I have a little experience of being in that kind of community, so I know what I'm talking about. And it's a really strong cause of gear acquisition syndrome. Another cause of gear acquisition syndrome besides fear of missing out is marketing promotion. Marketing. This gear manufacturer, whether it's camera manufacturer, lens manufacturer, guitar maker, they all have to push their product out using marketing so that they can sell their product. It's very simple. If they cannot sell their gear, if they cannot push their products out, they will not get profit and their business will suffer. It's just simple business, you know? So this manufacturer will do whatever they can to seduce their target market so that they quickly buy their new product. And what happens is people who are easily seduced 
produced by marketing promotion will get tempted to buy these new products that these manufacturers are trying to push. Next gear acquisition syndrome cause is social media. Social media. Social media basically amplifies the marketing effect that I just previously mentioned to a stronger degree. Lots of people nowadays already have social media, be it in the form of Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And as many more people are starting to use more and more social media, the strength of this marketing power will become even more amplified. With social media, manufacturer can now spread to their target market faster, quicker, and wider. Alright, so now we've already talked about what causes gear acquisition syndrome. Now I want to talk about why gear acquisition syndrome is bad for you and why you should avoid it. Obviously, gear acquisition syndrome is bad for your wallet, but it's not just about money. One thing about gear acquisition syndrome is that it oftentimes leads to disappointment. Oh my god! Trust me, I've been there. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that if you're buying this new camera or if you're buying this new phone or if you're buying this new guitar or this pedal, then it will solve all of your creative problems. You're thinking that everything will become better. The sound will become better. The image quality will become better. Everything will become nicer. You then proceed to buy that new guitar that you've always wanted or that new camera that you've seen on DP Review. No offense, DP Review. I'm your fan too. After you bought that thing, then you're as happy as a kid after a final exam. Well, now you are entering the honeymoon phase of using your gear and you start enjoying using your gear for a long period of time. But then, one day, your honeymoon period will suddenly end and your gear doesn't feel any special anymore. That sprinkly magic thingy is already gone from your gear and now you still get the same problems, you don't have any improvements on your result. And then that's when disappointment comes, when your gear isn't actually delivering anything new to your result or isn't improving anything and you start to realize it. Oh. The point is, you should avoid gear acquisition syndrome because it can lead you to disappointment. Other reason to avoid gear acquisition syndrome is because it can distract you. What I mean by that is that gear acquisition syndrome can make you forget the why of your doing this art. Instead of focusing on trying to be more creative and trying to enjoy the process, as well as making results, you end up obsessing over gear selection. Now don't get me wrong, gear selection is important, but it's not the main point, especially when you are creating something. Alright, so now we've talked about some important points about gear acquisition syndrome. Now it's the time for me to share a little bit of tips about how you can avoid gear acquisition syndrome. First thing that you can do to avoid gear acquisition syndrome is to try to create some kind of a fun challenge. Restrict yourself a little bit when it comes to gear selection and then try to force yourself to become more creative with that limited selection of gear. Sometimes, a little bit of restriction is a great way to spark creativity. creativity. I tried this myself for both my photography stuff as well as my music stuff. With my music stuff, I forced myself to just use my guitar straight into the amp without using any effect for just a few weeks just to force myself to be more creative with my playing and try to focus more on learning new techniques. Of course, this means I cannot play some some types of music that I usually play, but this led me to discover a whole new techniques that I've never tried before, especially from jazz. In terms of photography, I've also tried using only one lens for a month. I tried this with my Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 as well as my Panasonic 20mm f1.7. So I really just use these two lens separately for one month each and just try to force myself to create something unique with just using one lens at a time. These restrictions not only help me to curb my gear acquisition syndrome, but it also helped me to become better with my skills as well as to become more agile and faster when it comes to creating art. But I also developed a new sense of appreciations toward the gears that I use during these restrictions so that I can better appreciate what they are and what I already have. Other thing that you can do to avoid gear acquisition syndrome is to practice more and more with the gear that you already have. As you can already tell, the keyword here is practice. Sometimes you already have everything that you need in order to be able to make art. What you actually need to do is to actually learning how to use them and to practice using them over and over and over again. Practice frequently. For example, I've been struggling to get a higher quality of sound when it comes to mixing my recording sessions and I play my cheap plugins for
for the cause of that lack of quality. However, as I keep practicing and learning and experimenting with my mixing techniques, I found out that the problem is not my cheap plugins. It's myself. My lack of techniques, my lack of skill really contributed to the lack of quality in my mixing sound. Now, I'm really happy with the improvement of the quality of my mixing, although they are not perfect yet. And I basically spend no money at all to get that improvement. Also, I've been lasting over the new Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm f1.7 lens because it's such a wide angle zoom with large f1.7 aperture that I think I need for my photography and filmmaking needs. However, I found out that my current wide angle lens, the Lawa 7.5 mm f2, is actually a great lens. I can get great result for photography and for video just using this lens and I don't need to purchase that Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm f1.7. This lens is as sharp, as good, and it's even wider than the Panasonic lens. And because I kept using this lens, I kept practicing over and over, learning how to use this lens, I now no longer lost with the Panasonic 10 to 25 mm f1.7. I can just be happy with this Lawa lens. All right, so the next thing that you can do to reduce gear acquisition syndrome is something that I learned from a YouTuber named Matt Avella. He basically said that you need to have some sort of a checklist that you can apply to your purchase decision before you buy a new gear. So here's the checklist. I added it a little bit to better fit this video. First, can I buy this thing? And will I have enough money after I buy this gear? Basically, my own thinking about this first checklist is that if you can buy this gear five times the amount of the price that it's being presented at you, then you're financially fine you'll be able to purchase it and you'll have enough money after you buy this gear. Number two on the checklist, can my old gear does what it does? Basically, do you already have something that you have that can do what this new gear can do? If you don't already have it, then it's a good reason to buy this gear. But if you already have it, then you have to move on to the next checklist. Number three, is the feature added on this new gear significant enough to justify an upgrade? Maybe your old camera is already too sluggish or its result is no longer up to the standard of your client. Or maybe your old guitar pedal is too noisy when you're using it on live performance like one of my guitar pedal or maybe if you are doing home recording and you are using virtual drum machine that virtual drum machine doesn't really sound as realistic it sounds too artificial and you need something that can be realistic and convincing for your client if those are the case then it's a good reason to upgrade to a new gear but if that's not the case then don't buy that new gear yet next on the checklist number four do i need it now can i hold off a few more months without using it Sometimes you don't have to have that new gear, you can just hold off using your old gear for a few more months and try to compensate for the lack of features on your older gear. If that's the case then great, you can hold off a few more months, you can be more patient and try to just suck it up and you know, hold off the gear acquisition syndrome within you. So hopefully with these four items in this checklist, you'll be able to be more mindful when it comes to your uh, new gear purchase decision. Alright, the next thing that you can do to control your gear acquisition syndrome is to be more tight and more disciplined with your personal finance. Okay, so I'm not really a financial advisor, I'm not really the expert, and I don't really know that much. So I'm talking here based on my personal experience. Okay, so basically, I set a limit, a maximum on my monthly spending because I want some of my money to go into my saving account. Basically, I have two important rules that I must follow. First, if I reach the limit on my monthly maximum spending, then I won't be spending any more money for that month. I won't be buying new gear at all. I try to just limit myself on that. And the second rule is I never use my saving account to buy any gear. My saving account is only for emergency. I don't want to use it for my uh, leisure, for my professional work whatsoever. This pandemic that's going on during the recording of this video taught me so much about the importance of having a saving account so that if a situation like this ever happen again, I can still survive with the fluctuating economy and the fragile situation around me by using my saving account. Also, I've been following some YouTube channels about minimalism. Uh, prominently from uh, Matt the Avila and Nathaniel Drew. They are basically advocates of minimalism and they really opened my eyes and broadened my perspective about minimalism itself and what are its benefits. Basically, I learned from them that my life goal is not just about owning more stuff, owning more money, owning more this and that, being more materialistic, but it's also about something else that's more important. For me, my life goals that I really prioritize are fulfillment, impact, and 
joy. Basically, this knowledge changed everything about me. This changed my perception of success. This changed my perspective of how I live my life day after day after day and just setting my priorities right. Now I don't really chase about uh, more money. I'm just chasing after financial freedom. I also don't chase about owning more stuff. I'm chasing more about making impact to other people, being useful for your community, and also fulfillment about what you're doing every day, as well as enjoyment and being joyful. Yeah, so I recommend you guys to subscribe to Nathaniel Drew and Matt the Avila. These guys are all about minimalism. I really think that you learn something from them and uh, it will help you to reduce your gear acquisition syndrome. Last but not least, to reduce your gear acquisition syndrome, try to enjoy the process and have fun while being creative. The keyword here is enjoy and fun. Just enjoy doing what you love, create memories with your art, and also create something meaningful. The result doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you enjoy the process and you can share it to people, then it's great. In some ways, what I'm trying to say is also to try to reduce your perfectionism because perfectionism not only will reduce your creativity and inspiration, it will also increase chance of gear acquisition syndrome. For example, these last few weeks, I've been trying to do more home recording again. I try to record some new songs, try to record some new covers just for fun, just for the sake of doing it and not for the sake of uploading a new content to YouTube. That is because I really love when the sounds that's in my head are being translated into a recording sessions that I can actually hear with my ears. It is just pure fun and I really enjoy the process of doing this home recording. This is the kind of fun that will make me forget about gear acquisition syndrome because all that I wanna do is try to hit record, try to play my instrument and try to mix it and hear the result immediately. I can recommend to you this book by Austin Kleon called Show Your World. This is a book that's really good for people like us, people who are involved in creative space. On one of its chapters, he basically something that really stuck in my head. He basically said to share something small every day. What you share doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you enjoy and benefit from the process, as well as you enjoy and having fun while sharing it to other people. Again, this is the complete opposite from perfectionism, where you are now starting to think about the process and you, you want to get start immediately and you don't have time to think about the gear and thus you forget about gear acquisition syndrome. Anyway, if you need some inspiration about how to become more creative and how to live a creative life, then I really recommend this book by Austin Kleon, Show Your Work. This is not sponsored by the way. Alright, so we're almost at the end of the video. So I hope this video has been able to give you a good glimpse about gear acquisition syndrome from my perspective. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll be more aware with the gear acquisition syndrome and you'll be more mindful and you have some strategies about how to tackle gear acquisition syndrome. At the very least, I hope that you're able to hold back on buying new gear that's unnecessary and also be more considerate about your purchase decision. Once again, before I end this video, the purpose of this video is not to try to stop you from buying anything. It's okay to buy a new gear once in a while, but be more mindful about it. If you have any other tips that I haven't mentioned in this video about how to reduce gear acquisition syndrome, please share them in the comments down below. So that is all for today's video. Please support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and goodbye.